very lively and you're going to see that it has some roots that goes back into Africa. Well, what is Kwele? It's the native music, folk music of the Virgin Islands and also now the official music of the Virgin Islands. It was, it was made, uh, the official music of the Virgin Islands, a little over 10 years ago uh, by the uh, then Governor Charles Turnbull through an executive, um, uh, actually it was the, the legislature actually passed a resolution making um, making uh, well, the official music of the, of the Virgin Islands while well, Charles Turnbull was the, the Governor of the Virgin Islands. Why music is important because it's part of our culture, it's part of our heritage, it's part of who we are as Virgin Islanders. It, it developed uniquely based on our experiences during the slave period. It's a reflection of our heritage, it's a reflection of our past, and now it is the embodiment of our culture. Um, some of these photos are representative of how our ancestors uh, shared their music. Um, this here, you're going to see a modern representation of this device here, which, which is called, interestingly enough, the ass pipe. <laughs> and there's, there's nothing um, obscene about that. That's, that's what it was called. It was actually the, the muffler of, of, a, of an old vehicle, and it was blown. And you, you can see a sample of how, how we've, um, we've been, we've, we've, um, how, how our culture evolves over time. Um, you have, you have um, someone playing a guitar, uh, and, and this is a, a, a pan that, that he's playing. But we, 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 we'll talk about the instrumentation and some of the ways in which this, this music and, and this art form evolved over time. Now, Kualbe was created from a fusion of what is called Bambula chants, Cariso songs, and melodies. And these are the African elements of Kualbe. But there's some, some other elements that we need, also need to talk about. Uh, it, it's also a combination of the military fife and drum music. Um, the Europeans brought the, the, the military um, aspect of Kuelbe, of what is now, now Kuelbe, and introduced it through their, their, um, their form of military music, which our people learned. And then the jigs, um, which came uh, mainly from Ireland and Scotland, um, became part of the rhythm as well as it became part of the dance. So Kuelbe is a vocal and instrumental music style. It is a reflection of country life in the Virgin Islands. And that was the reality of our ancestors' existence. Keep in mind that African people were brought to the Virgin Islands to work on sugar estates, on plantations. And these plantations were in, in the countryside. And in the countryside is where they had the opportunity to come together to socialize, be creative, and generate this music that we are trying to preserve for future generations. <sighs> it's a part of the rhythms that is key to understanding and appreciating Kuelbe. The In music you have rhythms and you have melodies. And the rhythms are very key. And most of the instruments in a Kuelbe band are actually rhythm instruments. There's really, there's really um, um, only one melody instrument and that would be the flute, the sax, or the accordion, or whatever kept the, kept the melody. And the, the rhythms are all African-based and 
African influenced rhythms. Um, Kwebe is a part of our culture and is expressed through language and also through the music. And again, it's a reflection of the social conditions of life in the Virgin Islands in the 18th and the 19th centuries. Uh, again, and here's another representation of uh, an early Kwebe band that, that's, that's performing. Um, back in the early times, um, the, uh, these bands would, would walk around the estates, um, like, like serenading um, and sharing this music, and that's, that's how one of the ways in which we're able to, to um, at least preserve some of the melodies, some of the rhythms, and some of the, the, the musical qualities that, that, that we, we enjoy today. Now, when Africans were brought to the Virgin Islands as slaves, they were not allowed to sing, play their own music, or perform the dances that they learned in Africa. The Danish government had passed strict laws that said that they could not play drums and they, they could not dance. However, being very creative, being ingenuous, they preserve some features of their African heritage. Some uh, performed their African dances and elements of the African drumming at night um, or camouflaging them in other practices. And we, we, we'll see some set examples of how, how that was done. Kwebe songs, both then and now, expressed all sorts of, of emotions, of attitudes, ideas, um, such as humor, satire, cynicism, moral virtues, social commentary, protest, and even revolution. Um, one of the famous revolution songs you may be familiar with is called Queen Mary. And it's a reflection of something that actually happened in our history that demonstrated our desire to protest our conditions. The musicians were self-taught and they lived on the sugar estates in the, in the countryside. And the instruments were mainly homemade instruments. And the style that they developed was original. On St. Croix especially, because as you know, St. Croix was, was more orient, oriented towards sugar production, the agricultural way of life was favorable to the development and the retention of this form of cultural expression. And again, um, photos of uh, way back, public musicians coming together and performing. Slaves also adapted the music and dances that they had seen performed in, in, by the masters. And they added their own rhythms, melodies, and other music elements. Um, the dance, many, many, many of the dances came from Europe, such as the quadrille, the lancers, some minuets, what are called pol polka mazorkas, jigs, seven steps, waltzes, Scottishes, um, and they became very popular among the native population here in, in St. Croix. Now, let, let me point out that these dances were very graceful, stately, European ballroom dances. The way they're performed now, um, they're not truly reflective of their European origin. The, our African ancestors put their own style into the dances. So when you see quadrille dancers um, um, uh, in the Virgin Islands now, it's, it's a lot different from what they were exposed to initially. They actually modified it, they adapted it to meet their needs, 
their requirements. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Kendall Henry uh, to come for a few minutes and say a few words about Quadrille because Mr. Henry is, um, he has his own Quadrille group and he is one of the youngest floor masters in the Virgin Islands right now. And he preserves this by uh, teaching Quadrille dancing in our schools to our children and they, they give demonstrations um, all over the Virgin Islands and everywhere where um, we're able to travel and, and share our cultural experience. Thank you. Now, quadrille dance is used, the music that is used for quadrille dance is quadrille music. Quadrille music is used for quadrille dance in various, various forms and fashion. In the formal quadrille where we have the French Lancers, we have five figures. In the minuets and the polkas and the seven step, those have special songs that is performed to dance to those various tunes. Now when we talk about the regular quadrille, we have six figures. We have the six figure that brings on the quadrille set, that starts the quadrille set, that brings the dancers onto the floor. Then we have the figure one and the figure three that has the same rhythm pattern. Then we have the figure two and the figure four that has the same rhythm pattern. Then we have the five and then we back to end with the six. Now quadrille, when you hear the word quadrille, in Europe quadrille, quattro, in Spanish in the four. That's where the French Lancers come in. The French Lancers is done with four couples and only four couples. Quadrille now, regular quadrille is done with an even number from four to 16, depending on the size of your group. Now, when you hear the words um, balance and tune, those are French words that we adapt and make it a part of the dance quadrille. Um, various groups on the island of St. Croix and in the Virgin Islands use Quelbe music. Quelbe music is the only type of music that is used to dance quadrille. Now we have the various islands, uh, for example, you have in Puerto Rico, they have the salsa and merengue. When you dance salsa, when you dance merengue, that's the type of music you'd use to dance. Quelbe music is used to dance quadrille. Now, when, now in the Virgin Islands, and especially in St. Croix, we are trying to um, bring back the quadrille dancing and the same way how Stanley and the Tennessee First Nights is making it where we want it for our generations and generations to live and continue our culture, we are going into the schools and to continue this art form of quadrille dancing, which is very, very important for who we are as Caribbean people. Um, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Henry. Now, one of the early predecessors of contemporary Quelbe music was a form called Bambula. Who in here is familiar with Bambula? Anybody? Okay, good, good. And, and, and this, this, this is something that a lot of people aren't, aren't aware of. Um, and Bambula is a strong African tradition of drumming, complex rhythms, singing of chants, and dancing. And it was performed by slaves in secret, and it reemerged after slavery ended. Because remember that um, that during slavery, the, our ancestors were forbidden from practicing any of those strong African traditions. Now, as a result, we don't have much documentation as to how the original Bambula dance may have, may have, been, may have occurred. But we, 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 have, we have some, based on some descriptions, historical descriptions, we have some ideas. And um, I'm gonna share with you uh, 
a sample of an interpretation of how Bambula may, ha may have been performed. And this, this is, a, this is a, a sample that, that, that is, was done by a, a group of Bambula dancers that, um, that practices art form on St. Croix.
Miss Christopher actually has uh, a performance where she, she gives sort of the, the evolutionary history of Carousel, bringing it from um, some of the themes from the 17th, 18th century into the 20th century. And um, it's, it's very enlightening, it's very educational, and uh, it, it also gives a reflection of life in the Virgin Islands in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. Another music that, um, that a lot of the guys in the band are very, very fond of as well, it's called masquerade music. Um, some people call it Wailingian music, but um, masquerade music is, is probably the most, most appropriate term because it comes from this tradition of the military drum and fife corps uh, with, again, the strong African influence in terms of the rhythms. Um, the so-called Wild Indian music traditions flourished in the, in the Virgin Islands in the 19th and early 20th century uh, throughout the Virgin Islands, well as St. Thomas, St. John, uh, and St. Croix. Um, in, in this clip, we have um, some students, we're working with some students um, to, to teach them how to play it. And we thought it might be appropriate to share with you how these young people um, got the skill, the art, to perpetuate um, our, our masquerade music or, or, or something that's called Wild Indian music. Dancing um, in a costume, um, you, you may be familiar with that. Um, that's that's the way it was danced, and that's the music that, that accompanies that dance. And that was that was a, a, a Virginia tradition, especially around holidays. You would have masqueraders going uh, around their states, and sometimes in, in the cities, uh, performing. Um, and um, again, you listen to the rhythms. You see the strong African um, influence, and you'll see that it's it's. It, um, it, it, it's very exciting, it's very exuberant, and it's very lively. Um, sometimes uh, it, we hope that we could uh, give you a demonstration of it today, but, but we don't have all, all the equipment we need. But in, in most cases, sometimes you have uh, a flute playing along with the drums, and that's also a, a key part of, the, of the, the masquerade experience in the Virgin Islands. Now, Quelva music is an art form that uses different instruments, all playing a, a different rhythmic pattern. But one thing I need to share with you, culture is not static. Culture changes. And the music is not static. The music changes according to the culture. And you may, you may have you may hear people say, well, um, that's not authentic. Um, but if you're aware that culture is dynamic and it changes, modern Quelden music, which, which has changed over the years, is now authentic for the 20th and the 21st century. Um, the instruments change over time. And it's based on what's available. Quelva music is created by an instrument or a singer who leads with a melody and a variety of string and percussion instruments that accompanies the lead. And we're, we're going to see some of the instruments that have been part of 
uh, traditional club event, then no. Um, in the 19th century, 1800s, the elite instrument that played the melody was often a violin. Um, we don't see violins used much in, in Quebec bands anymore, but this was one of the first instruments that, that was used to, to, um, to generate the melody. Uh, we also had a wooden flute. It looks something like that. At one point, they, they used an accordion. Some of the instruments that kept the rhythm included a tambourine. We don't see much tambourines used in any of the events anymore. One of the key instruments, in my view, is the steel, which is really a, 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 a triangle, which um, we, we get a chance to see and hear one in, in a few minutes. A banjo, which is also another great rhythm instrument that's that's used in, in many other bands. Guitar. Other rhythm instruments included what is called a guiro or a squash. Now, what do these instruments sound like when they come together as one? And I'm going to share with you uh, a sample of Quelbe music and how it must have sounded to our ancestors before electricity. Um, since then, a lot of instruments are <coughs> amplified and, and have taken on some electronic qualities. So this is an example of, of a recording of, of the band that was done without any electronic instruments. <laughs> and how one 
when they combine together um, what actually is the embodiment of what we call Quail Bay. And I'd like to introduce the guys in, in the band um, to, to come and, and, and give us a hand. First, I want to introduce our illustrious leader, Dr. Stanley Jacobs. <laughs> Stanley was just recognized about two weeks ago by the University of the Virgin Islands and was awarded an honorary doctorate degree. <laughs> and he's been he's been the the um, the heart of the band for the past forty seven years. <laughs> I'm going to ask Stan to come and join me on stage. I'm going to ask um, Mr. Kevin Christian, um, who is our, our, our banjo player, to also come. <laughs> Mr. Gilbert Hendricks. And I, I bet you can guess that instrument he has in his hand, what it's called. <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys are you're quick, you're quick learners. <laughs> now, what is setting up? Um, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Henderson, I'd like to um, also introduce, I don't know if you want to go over, but Dr. Olaf Hendricks. <laughs> he, he's our sax player. And, um, oh, and Mr. Shelly Schulterbrand, who's our, our keyboard player. <laughs> Last and, not, and certainly not least, Mr. Kendall Henry, who was instrumental in um, facilitating our our um, our trip here. Um, to, 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 uh, <laughs> now, um, again, we, we, have a, we have a few instruments that are missing, but but again, um, I think you're, you're going to get the idea in terms of how this comes together to form that sweet music that we love, that we preserve that we call Quail Bay. If, if you're able to, um, if, you, if, if you're able to attend the event, I think that we're supposed to perform tomorrow, you'll, you'll get a, a much fuller um, idea in terms of, of, um, of what, what Quail Bay music is, can do, and, and has done. Is, um, is missing. Um, he's our lead singer and also another banjo player, also Kevin's dad. Um, he had a little medical emergency, so I think right now he's at um, Emory Hospital. Um, he's getting taken care of by, by, by the doctors there. But we, we, um, we, we have the, the, we're hoping for the best with him, but um, it's just, just uh, hopefully it's not, not going to be too, uh, too serious. Okay? Um, what I'm going to ask the guys to do is first, let's begin with some rhythm. Um, let's start with the steel. Let's, 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 let's play a, a, a tune. Then we're going to add some squash. Now, the bad word instrument, <laughs> the pipe. Thank you. 
um, and now we're gonna add, let's keep going guys, we're gonna add um, banjo. really permeates there, but if you could talk a little bit just um, historically yeah. and then to today, okay. because every time I go or my friends from St. Thomas, I just don't hear about it as yeah. much as I do on St. Croix. Okay, that's, that's a very good question, and um, let, let, me, let me point out that the main difference between St. Croix and St. Thomas historically has been the fact that um, St. Thomas was more commercial um, the experience in slavery has not been as extensive in St. Thomas as in St. Croix. St. Croix is more agricultural. There were more slaves brought to St. Croix um, than, than St. Thomas. So two different experiences. The sugar industry <laughs> lasted for a very short time in St. Thomas and um, it died out and they, again they moved towards a more commercially oriented economy. So the experiences, because they so were different, the African retentions um, was not as pervasive in St. <coughs> Thomas as they were in St. Croix. And again, be because of the experience in agriculture, living in the country, in the rural, in the rural parts of the, the island, if not the plantations, um, that allowed the camaraderie, the, the social interactions, and the preservation and the, the, the maintenance of those African traditions. Also, some other differences, and, and you can see it in terms of the the, um, the, the dances. Um, Saint Croix dances what is called a French quadrille. 
St. Thomas that is the German equivalent, that is different. And for some reason which I cannot explain, and I will try to, try to, try to explain, um, St. Croix has a stronger desire to preserve the culture much more than, than St. Thomas. That's been, that's been my experience. <laughs> yes, I might have just gotten wrong. Good afternoon. I was I grew up on um, St. Thomas. What's the difference between what was it, Milo and Yepsen and Stanley? Was it the same type of music or is it different or? No, um, there, there's this difference. Um, what, what, what you're going to find is that um, uh, Quebec music, as identified, um, has the characteristics um, and the instrumentation that I try to share with you. Um, Milo is, is a very good band. Um, it's, it's, it's now called Milo's Kings. Uh, since since, since Milo, Milo passed. Um, they're more of a variety type band um, where they, 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 would, they would play some traditional tunes but with, with their interpretation. Um, there's some key elements in, in, in Cuban music which, 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 um, which we identified that is consistent. I mean, that's there regardless of what. And that's, that would be the, the steel, the squash, a banjo and a lead instrument, whether it's a sax, a flute, or something else, and and, and there could be some um, exchanges here and there in terms of other, other instruments. But but there's some key components, which which is the foundation for the music. And um, like Milo and Yapson, they played some of our traditional music, but using their own particular style. And it, I I really wouldn't um, classify it as Quelbe, but it's 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 traditional version of music that that um that that um that, that they, they put their own interpretation to. And feel free to ask any of these gentlemen on the stage questions as well. This is more comment more than a question. Sure. I was born in St. Thomas. <laughs> I grew up in St. Thomas and you're right about the culture being more so Progressive in St. Croix, but I must say that we are been learning a lot to the point where we have a junior high school, a, um, middle school, where we actually have a quail band, yeah. and, we, and they are all middle schoolers, and of course, the, as the, with the BCB, Flambo yes, Cambo? BCB, yes, okay, the Flambo Cambo, and also we have another one that is an elementary school at Muller School. <laughs> And they call, they call themselves the Lashing Pigs. No, no, Pops, 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 these guys, these guys went to St. Thomas um, at the invitation of Mr. Jones. Yeah, and um, and um, show those guys, show the, the kids how to do that. We had s several um, Quebec groups in St. Croix in the schools as well, which these guys also went in the schools and um, and, and shared their um, the art form with, with them. And where where we try to encourage all the schools to get involved in preserving the culture. And, and keeping this art form alive because it's uniquely Virgin Islands art form. I'm not selling my talk about that. They are flambo flambo and, and the, the experiences we've had. Oh, yeah, well, we got the same, this walking, we had the same, <clears throat> the same experience with a flambo combo as we had with the St. Croix Educational Complex School. We went there and we taught the, the children to play each, each one of the instruments, pipes, steel, glass, everything. And uh, we did the same thing with Flambo Combo, and now Flambo Combo really coming up, you know, and they're strong. So the one in St. Croix is also getting stronger. They name Sweet Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> they, they get in there. And uh, but the thing is, the thing is, um, we want to keep the children uh, conscious of our music, 
so that he could he don't dead off when we got, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. Uh, let me let me point out that um, that recently after Stanley was awarded honorary doctorate, we had a little reception for him at um, at one of our local restaurants, and Flambeau Combo came over to St. Croix just to perform for him. It's about two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it's it's about really it's about sharing, it's about preserving and continuing these elements of, of our culture. And um, uh, again, uh, we want that all our young people um, at least be familiar with it, be aware of it, and do what they can. And let me also point out that this band, we're a nonprofit organization, and we have sponsored several scholarships um, to students. And we're proud to, we're, we're proud to um, share with you that three of the students that we have it's, it's, first of all, the scholarship is, is for music. They have to be studying music, okay? I don't care what kind of music, any kind of music. Three of our scholarship recipients have gone off, off to college and come back and now they're teaching in the Virgin Islands public school system. Teaching music. Questions? I, I want to say, I have to back up St. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I bought St. Thomas, I bought St. Thomas. But as a child, queer, the music was always strong in St. Thomas. Because I remember Mungo Nights nice. used to come to the school and teach it. And in May, we used to have a big thing in the field yeah. where May Day we used to dance quadrille music. And that's right. where I was when I first got introduced to it. Yeah. But for me, growing up in St. Thomas, it was strong in St. Thomas. Too. Okay, and what was some of the, the, the queer the bands? What was the name of the No, no. no. That's why I said Mr. Bombonai. And that's what I'm saying. We, and, and we didn't have no back. No, no, yeah. there's no argument as far as it's strong and St. Croix and the band because the band I always know for the sleepless night. Yeah. We didn't have no back. But you had bands. Yes. Does. Listen, you had band. Remember? That will be band you, I know. Yeah, man, you remember um what did my name? Uh, Posse, Posse. Posse, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Remember the friend name? Rico. Uh, Rico used to play with him. But yeah. Tony. Tony and the rats. They used to play well, man. They used to play for Padre Lance, though. Okay, I, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't know about him. <laughs> I know. I'm going to die. 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 They have a regular Padre Lance. They say you even know more about more than me, right? But, <laughs> but I know we should dance it with Mungo Niles as children. In Quadrille. And we should have like a, a thing in the field in me that we are in. So it was always strong, yeah. so that must, maybe not as in St. Croix, but it wasn't weak in St. Croix. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, may, they, that may thing is that um, related to the maypole. Yeah. yeah. used to plant the maypole. Yeah. And by the way, that, that tradition is, is um, being introduced in the school system. Um, where, where annually, you know, they have the, um, the, the planting of the, the maypole, uh, as well as um, preserving other, other cultural traditions. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, please don't misinterpret what I was trying to say. I, I don't want to create any, the, the division, the, the friction. No, yeah, no. Uh, I just just observing that um the that that it we we play regularly for quadrille dancers dances on Saint Croix. Yeah, and um the the um, the, the Saint, Saint Thomas Heritage Dance had, had tried to bring it back by having quadrille dancers, and, and they brought us over the first one. And they said we'll try at least one every couple of months or every every um, twice a year or something, but that didn't quite quite work out. But but we work very closely with our our St. Thomas friends to, to try and, and share this and encourage it because it's it's, it's a very part, important part of our culture that we want to make sure that that, that continues to live uh, for future generations. Yeah. Any questions for any of the guys? Then I'll ask them to, to, to give you another number. Does Kendall Hendricks yeah. play okay. any instruments? Yes. He, he, plays, um, he plays several instruments, as a matter of fact. Um, he plays the steel, the squash, the drums, the congas, um, cowbell. The radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of these guys, in fact, all of them play more than one instrument. 
and anytime we're short, um, someone can step in and, um, and, and, and do something else. Uh, so, questions? Take the mic, take the mic. What's some of the countries you've been to to promote Kuala music? Okay. I know Denmark. Yeah, we've been to Denmark about four or five times. Um, we've been to we've been through the entire Caribbean, um, except for Cuba, which we're going there in July. Um, we've performed all of the United States, um, New York, D.C., Atlanta, Florida, um, New Orleans. Um, over the years, um, we've we've um, we've we've. we've been around a little bit. San Antonio. Yeah, we, San Antonio, Texas. Um, so uh, we've, we've um, and we may go to Norway next year. Norway and I think he said Norway and uh, what's the other country? Sweden. Iceland. Iceland? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to take us to the Arctic Circle? <laughs> <laughs> We prayed that we got <laughs> The only problem is that is that um if the music is so hot it might begin to melt those polar ice caps. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> you want another want song guys? Yeah. Um this song that we're gonna play is three four rhythms. Um in the quadrille in the quadrille set. We uh, consider it as a number one for our number three. Six eight, six eight rhythm. Uh, consider a figure one or a figure a figure three. Again, don't so tell master don't send for me because me no walk no more. So tell master don't send for me because me no walk no more. So it, it's a it's a rebellious song, you know. So if money don't raise this year, the war comments again. Um, so tell master don't send for me because 
I ain't want to walk no more. So why are going to start if my money don't raise? Can I tell my And again, that, that, that's, that's probably going back to the time of the, um, the, the issues around um, the, how much the folks on the, the plantations got, got, got paid and the, the, the demand for increasing in terms of payment. And again, a reflection of, of, of real times, uh, real conditions, and expressed through song and music. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next song we'll play is a jig. Um, in the quadrille set is a figure, figure two or a figure four, or sometimes it's a figure five as well, depending on the flow master. This name, Brongo Jig, because he make it. That's where I live. Um, Dr. Hendricks, I do, do same as Dr. Hendricks. This is one of his um, original music um, um, creations that was released on our our Emancipation album. That um, that um, that is very popular. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, you know that he's also he's a, he's a good psychiatrist because he take good care of the band from 1942 till now. <laughs> And um, what I want to point out is that he's also a master musician and composer because a lot of the song names that we do play, he composed, you see? So, <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our ancestors. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, a lot of the song names that we do sing, they ain't in bad word. It's because we change them. <laughs> yeah, we don't we play them every place, you know? <laughs> what, what, we, what, what we're going to do is let the chair on them do that. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> OK. 
Okay, we're, we're going to, um, we don't want to spoil you, so we're, we're going to, um, <laughs> we're, we're going to hope that we see you all tomorrow, um, where you're going to get a chance to, to see the, the, the full group and um, experience the magic of Quelbe music from the Virgin Islands. Thank you for giving a great audience. Again, I want to thank the, um, the Virgin Islands uh, Association of Georgia and the Division of Tourism um, for helping to make today's event possible. We are truly indebted to, 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 to both organizations and we look forward to um, assisting you in any way um, as we try to uh, preserve our music. Just, just in case you don't know, Dr. Larson is also a drummer, a keyboard player, a bass man, just as good as he's a narrator. So please give him a round of applause. Thank you. We have to um, import, him, import him out of Washington because he didn't want to come home. And he's also all of the CDs that we have made, he's our engineer, he does everything, everything. So. Thank you. I think we can, we can encourage him to do one more for you. Okay, another question, yes. Notice how you're stressing time signatures with the music. Yeah. Now, uh, the one you just did, you said that's for quadrilles. The one that you did previously in 3-4, uh, what is 3-4 time signature mostly for? Um, the, figure, the figure one and the figure three in quadrille, in the set of quadrille. Waltz. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and waltz as well. Yeah, that's real. Okay. Makes sense. Listen, listen, the, the, those are 6-8 six, yes, six, 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 yes, six, eight, yeah. And the 2 and the 4 is in 2 fourths rhythm. Yeah, the difference is bouncy, a jig, you could, in fact, that's what they do, the jig too, that, that rhythm, that particular rhythmic pattern is a pattern for the well Indian music also. So that, you know, that's why they call it jig. But that's the rhythmic pattern for the number two and the number four. So, you know, two fourths, right? That's why they Now, this, this song that, that they're going to sing is very suggestive, so pay attention to the lyrics. <laughs> Tell me, 